Welcome to this tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at the allocation problem using the Hungarian algorithm. So we've got an example. All allocation problems are simply trying to find the best combination of people to tasks in the minimum time available. So I have a range of four people and four tasks here. And the information we have is that Amy can do task P in 17 minutes. Um, Amy can do task Q in 20, uh, 24, Amy can complete task R in 42, and Amy can complete task S in 21, and so forth for Beth, Kate, and Dana. So first of all, the first step in trying to perform a uh, Hungarian algorithm or an allocation problem is to complete a row reduction. And as the name suggests, we want to reduce each row. So first of all, identify the smallest number in each row. So on Amy's row, the numbers are 17, 24, 42 and 21, and 17 clearly is the smallest number. In Beth's, 18 is the smallest number. In Kate's, 14 is the smallest number. In Dana's, 11 is the smallest number. So we subtract the smallest number in each row from every element in that row. So 17 takes 17, 24 takes 17, 42 takes 17, 21 takes 17. And for Beth, we're minusing 18, subtracting 18 from every element. Kate subtracting 14 as it was the lowest um, row number and Dana subtracting 11. Okay, and that clearly introduces zeros in each one of those rows because we've subtracted the smallest number from each row. Now we've completed our row reduction. We need, now want to check and see how we got an allocation, a correct allocation. Now this seems a little bit abstract but all you need to do is look at what's the minimum number of either vertical lines or horizontal lines we need to use to cover up all the zeros. So in this case I can use one vertical line on task P and one vertical line on task Q and I've covered all the zeros. So this is not an optimal allocation. An optimal allocation is whereby it takes four lines to cover up the four zeros. Here I can cover it with one, two vertical. We haven't achieved an optical, sorry, an optimal allocation. So we've done our row reduction, we have looked, attempted allocation, been unsuccessful. The next step is to perform a column reduction with the numbers that remain. So now we have the numbers in column of task P, task Q, task R and task S. And again we're identifying the smallest number, in this case 0 is in task P column, 0 in task Q, and 1 in column task R, and 2 in column task S. Again, we subtract that number from every other number in the column. So, for task P, they're all just subtracted by zero. Task Q, they subtract zero. Task R, we're subtracting one, because that's the smallest element in that particular column. And task S, we're subtracting by two. Okay, we've now got more zeros. We've completed our column reduction. Let's now try an allocation. And as you can see, one, two, and three I can cover all the zeros with three lines, either be horizontal or vertical. In this case, two vertical, one horizontal. So this is not an optimal allocation because the number of lines, minimum number of lines, that is four, doesn't equal the number of jobs four. We can do this in three. In order to have an allocation, we need to take up four lines because there's four jobs. So we've tried a row reduction, a column reduction, and tried the attempt at an allocation after both, unsuccessfully. The third step is to perform what we call the Hungarian algorithm. The Hungarian algorithm asks us to identify the smallest uncovered number. So in this case it's 1. We then subtract that number from every uncovered element. So the numbers remaining that haven't got these particular lines going through them. So 24 take 1, 16 take 1, 5 take 1, 2 take 1, 6 take 1, and 1 take 1. Okay, we've done that. Now, our next step is to deal with the covered numbers. We actually look at where there's an intersection. So number 7 here, there's an intersection of two lines, and 0, there's an intersection of two lines. So what we do is we add the minimum number to those intersection points. So the minimum number was 1 that was uncovered originally. So we add 1 to 7 and 1 to 0. That now changes those numbers to an 8 and a 1. Now, that is the Hungarian algorithm. Let's try an allocation again. And this time, 
It does require one, two, three, and four lines, be them either vertical or horizontal, to cover all the zeros. So this is called an optimal allocation. The number of lines used is equal to the number of jobs, four lines for four jobs. So we've performed an allocation. We now need to go forward to the bipartite graph. Now the bipartite, the bipartite graph rather, is used to allocate a job to a particular person. Only one job per person can be allocated. So let's have a look. Now Amy, we use the zero to identify which jobs the person can be allocated. Amy only has one zero, so she has to be allocated task P. So Amy can only do task P, so she's allocated task P. Remembering that each person must have one job. Kate only has one zero, so she can only complete task Q. So Kate can only do task Q, so she's allocated task Q. We move on to Dana. Dana's got two options. She can do task P or task S because they've both got zeros in them. So Dana can do task P or task S. However, P has already been allocated to Amy because that was the only task she can do. So as a result, Dana has to complete task S. She's been allocated task S. Which means Beth is the only one left to do task R. Let's have a look. Beth, with our allocation technique, has got a zero next to task R and task S. So she could do either of those tasks. So Beth could do R or S. However, Dana's already allocated S, so R is the only one remaining. So Beth is also the only one that can do task R. So she is allocated task R. So now we've completed our bipartite graph. Each person is allocated to one single task. The final job is to now calculate the overall time allocation. So we look at the fact, we go back to our original times. Amy received task P, Beth received task R, Kate received task 14, and Dana received task, sorry, task Q for Kate, and Dana received task S. So the total time for this project will be 17 plus 19 plus 14 plus 14. So the minimum time that we complete this task allocation with one person doing one job each is 64. I hope this has clarified the Hungarian algorithm and that you will view this a couple of times to clarify it in your own mind. The process involves a row reduction, checking the allocation. If unsuccessful, a column reduction, checking the allocation. If still unsuccessful, a Hungarian algorithm and checking the allocation. Once we have an allocation, we progress to the job allocation of a bipartite, whereby each person and each task is listed and we go through looking for the zeros and joining them together to find out which person will in fact be allocated which job. And finally, on this last screen, we work out the minimum time for the job completion. Thanks for viewing.